Welcome back friends and neighbors. I hope the new year finds you happy and healthy and ready to do some networking. Now on the channel we've talked a lot about networking and protocols and equipment, how to put all that stuff together and I thought I'd start off this season with just a little something different. We're going to do a little application testing and performance. It's a great way to make sure that your network is up and running the way that you want it to. So we're going to use a tool called iPerf to do just that. And so this morning I've got a demo set up for you. So without further ado, let's do a little iPerf. So let me tell you a little bit about what we have going on here. As you can see from my Visio diagrams, here I've got two topologies depicted. This one up top, whoops, this guy up top, okay, is the one that I'm actually going to be using for the test. It's a very simple topology. You can see that I've got uh, two machines, one with an IP address of 10.0.0.3 and the other one with 10.0.0.4. Now the way that iPerf works is you install iPerf, the full executable on both machines, and you run one as a server and one as a client. So you can see here I've got the base command uh, is iperf-s and the base command for the iperf client is dash c. Pretty straightforward. Now there are lots and lots of options that you can use uh, with iperf. Mostly the server will be just a dash s and then maybe a TCP or UDP specification. And the way that it works is that the client and server send data back and forth. And based on the rate at which packets are received and how fast things can be sent, we get a result from the network performance. Now this is a very simple topology, it's just a demo, but what I might do is run an application or iperf server and then test from a number of locations on my network. And this can be over a routed or a switched network, so it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be hitting the iperf server based on its IP address, not simply trying to find the server or application that's running on the network with some sort of discovery. So I'm going to be going after the IP address. So what I'm going to do is light off the server on the other end and we'll start off with a TCP based test. iperf also has a couple of the parameters set by default. So let's get uh, these two guys up. All right. So you can see here that uh, I just tested via ping that I've got connectivity and my IP address. Oops, that's not going to work. My IP address here is 10.0.0.3. So if you give me just a second, I will start up the iperf server. Okay, so I just ran this command over there. So that's all I did. iperf s and I lit it off. Well, right now I'm going to try to connect to it as a client. So I'm just going to go after that particular server. Now by default, iperf does a TCP test and that what that allows us to do is get some some capacity testing done. There's also a window size associated with TCP and then there's also a time, a default time. So I am going after this with a, a 10 second time and you can see right here that I've got a 64 kilobyte or 64k uh, window size. So in this 10 seconds you can see that I went from 0 to 10 seconds that I transferred 768 megabytes for a top speed or an average speed actually of 644 megabits per second and if you did the calculation on that you would see that was the case. Now I can do a whole bunch of different options with iperf. I can add dash w for the window size. So I might say, well, I want a smaller window size. And so I'll do that, that test as well. Now what's interesting about testing the window size is that changing your window size changes the performance of the connection. Why might I want to do that? Well, if I've got limitations or if I'm trying to optimize my connections, if I'm trying to have a lot of users connect to my servers, well, I might want to change the window size that they're allowed to connect with. So you can see here that I went from a 64K default window size up here and I used an 8,000 uh, byte window size down here. And look what happened to my transfer and my bandwidth. I went from 768 to 331 and 644 megabits per second to 278. 
Now why would that be? Well that's because my window closed down on me. I profess the ability to send a lot of data. Now I've already done a couple of videos for you and I'll link those in this video on how applications work with their TCP windows and I've described that in uh, also the chapter, chapter 9 I think it is in the packet guide to core network protocols. Let's do one other thing before we close out today. I'm going to shut down my server and I'm going to set up a UDP test. So note, also, note here that we've got the transfer and the bandwidth, but I don't have a whole lot of information regarding you know, some other performance parameters. So let's see if we can figure out another way to get that done. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to change my iPerf server to be uh, to use UDP testing. Uh, there we go. Okay. So now over here on my iPerf client, since with UDP testing it's not appropriate to use window sizes. It doesn't really make any sense because UDP doesn't use window sizes. I'm just going to do this instead. So we've got uh, another set of packets going back and forth, but the focus is a little bit different. Uh, I don't control the stream in quite the same way. And now you can see that I've got a different kind of transfer here. So 1.25 megabytes were transferred at 1.05 megabits per second. It took me Here's my delay. Um, whoops. Sorry. Let me get this window a little bit bigger here. Now this number is actually a jitter number that tells me uh, what the difference is between actual and expected arrival time. So that's what that's what UDP gets me. It buys me this jitter number that becomes very very important for some types of applications. Well I think that'll about do it for this iPerf test. I hope uh, that you get something out of this and go ahead and give iPerf a try. It is a free download and it works pretty well. We do a, use it for a lot of testing here and I've used it a lot on larger networks like Genie and things like that. So uh, that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching, thanks for listening, and may your packets always reach their destinations.